Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is the third part of the video entitled Hong Kong Shipping Guide 2022. Two point three conventions on limitations of liability for maritime claim. The London Convention seen example the nineteen seventy six conventions on limitations of liability for maritime claims together with the nineteen ninety six protocol OLLMC is applied in Hong Kong by the merchant shipping limitations of ship owners liability ordinance. 2.4 Procedures and Requirement for Establishing a Limitation Fund Limitation under the LLMC is available to sellers and ship owners who are defined as the owner, shatterers, manager, or operator of the ship. In order to establish a limitation fund and to obtain a decree limiting their liability, a plaintiff must commence a limitations actions in the Admiralty list of the High Court by issuing and serving a writ on a named defendant, one of the persons with claim against the plaintiff in respect of the casualty. Following the issue by the court of a decree, the plaintiff must constitute the fund pay payment into court in accordance with the provisions in the in this schedule to cap 434 as above by reference to a fixed formula related to the tonnage of the ship and special trailing right. 3. Cargo Claims 3.1 Bills of Lading The HQ Visby rules are given statutory effect in Hong Kong by carriage of goods by sea ordinance. Neither the Hamburg nor the Rotterdam rules have been applied to Hong Kong. 3.2 Title to shoe on a bill of lading. Title to shoe vests in the lawful order of the bill of lading. Sections 4 of the bill of lading and analogous shipping document ordinance cap 414. 3.3 Ship owners' liability and limitation of liability for cargo damages. A carrier will not become liable for any loss or damage to or in connection with the goods in an amount exceeding 666.67 as Singapore dollars per package or units to as Singapore dollars per kilograms of gross weight of the goods loss of damage, whichever is the higher. The HQ FSB rules can apply mandatorily under sections 3 of CAP 462 or voluntary by virtue of incorporation of a close paramount in the contact of carriage. A ship owner should, as the actual as opposed to constructual carrier would be expected to obtain the benefit of package limitation as a bailey on terms. 3.4 Misdeclarations of cargo The shipper is deemed to have guaranteed the accuracy of the information which, which they have supplied regarding the nature and details of their cargo. In the event of misdescription, the shipper is obliged to indemnify the carrier for loss or damage resulting from inaccuracies in the shipper's descriptions of the goods. The relevant provisions of the HQ FSB rules in Article 3 R5, a main source of Hong Kong law is the common law and rules of equity, as derived from the judgment of courts in Hong Kong and other common law jurisdictions. Hong Kong Constitution, which is known as the Basic Laws, provides at Article 84 that Hong Kong courts may refer to and apply case law precedents from other common law jurisdiction. As a result, the Hong Kong courts will often refer to and apply in this case law in disputes concerning bills of lading and other maritime matters. Time bar for filing claims for damage or lost cargo. Where the HQ FSB rules apply, 
the carrier is discharged from all liability in respect of the goods unless it is brought within one year of the delivery or the date when they should have been delivered time limit may be extended by agreement of the parties for maritime liens and ship rest 4.1 ship arrest Provisions of the 1952 Arrest Conventions are applicable to Hong Kong by virtue of Sections 12A until 12E of the High Court Ordinance which stated governs ship arrest in Hong Kong. 4.2 Maritime Liens For details on the maritime and statutory liens recognized in Hong Kong, C1.1 Domestic Laws Establishing the Authorities of the Maritime and Shipping Courts 4.3 Liability in Personum of Owners or Demise Shatterer Where there is a traditional maritime as opposed to poorly statutory lien on a ship of for the amount claim and actions in REM may be brought in the court of first instance against the ships. The maritime lien survives any private sale of the ship and so can be enforced by way of arrest even if the current owners or demise shatterers of the ship have no impersonal liability for the claim. As regards the statutory liens for claims in respect of cargo, shatter party, repair supplies, and etc. as described in sections 12a of the High Court Ordinance, the right to arrest is subject to satisfying the criteria set out as follows, where the claim arises in connections with the ship and the person who would be liable on the claim in an action in personum, was when the cause of actions arose, the owner of shutter or of or in possession or in control of the ship. An action in rem may be brought in the court of first instance against the ships. If at time when the action is brought, the relevant person is either the beneficial owner of the ship in respect of all the shares, uh, shares in it on the shutter of it under a shutter by demise or any other ships of which are the time when the action is brought. The relevant person is the beneficial owners in respect of all the shares in it. A protective in rem read may be issued, which a prison, which presentive prison preserve the statutory lien against any future private sale or change of ownership of the vessel. As a result, an innocent purchaser or demise shutter may find their vessel arrested in respect of earlier claims for which they have no impersonal liability. 4.4 Unpaid Bunkers Bunker supplies can arrest a ship in respect of unpaid bunkers, provided that the time when they issue their interim read, the person liable to them in personum is either the owner of the ships of the shutterer of its under a shutter by demise. This means that a bunker supplies can only arrest a ship if it contracted with the ship owners or bareboat shutterer. As a result, if the only part liable for the unpaid bunkers is merely a time shutterer of the vessel, the right of arrest does not rise. 4.5 Arresting a vessel There are few formalities required in order to arrest a vessel. There is no need for a power attorney, nor notarize, or a postal document, nor translations. All the arresting party needs to do file with the writ and affidavit setting out the basis of its right of arrest, pursuant to the High Court ordinance and exhibiting the supporting document together with an undertaking to buy the bailiff's cause of arrest and preservation of the vessel. A search should also be made for any caveats against arrest which may have been filled at court. So the time is up and the article will be continued to read on the next video. So don't forget to like, 
like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!